Hello YouTube, this is DVD Review Studios here, and today I'm going to be doing a video on my Stanley Kubrick Blu-ray collection. Uh, this was a requested video by fellow subscriber Paul Atelli, who requested a look at the uh, Visionary Filmmaker Collection box set, but I thought I would do one better and uh, just include the other Kubrick movies that I also own. Um, so we have the Visionary Filmmaker Collection, which includes seven of Kubrick's movies, Lolita, 2001, uh, Clockwork Orange, Barry Lyndon, The Shining, Full Metal Jacket, and Eyes Wide Shut. Uh, we have Spartacus, the 50th anniversary release, Doctor Strangelove, and uh, my only Kubrick DVD, which I would love to upgrade to Blu-ray, I believe there's a Masters of Cinema release of this movie, and that, of course, is Paths of Glory, um, which is a fairly short film, but I really thoroughly enjoyed this, and... Um, it certainly would be nice to upgrade it at some point very soon. Uh, there are a couple of other movies available from Kubrick on Blu-ray that I don't own. Um, there's the Killing plus Killer's Kiss, which I believe come together in a little set, um, which I've seen elsewhere on Amazon in particular. And um, I believe there's also another movie called Fear and Desire, which I don't know if that does have a Blu-ray release or not. I'll have to look that up after I've made this video. Um, but this is all the Kubrick movies I own, and I am a huge fan of him as a director, and certainly some of these movies have made it into my top 20 favourite movies of all time. Uh, so I'm going to begin in date order, really, with, um, first of all, Paths of Glory, which is a very short film, it's about an hour and a half, and um, was overall certainly an interesting portrayal of the First World War, trench warfare in general, and um, Colonel Dax, portrayed by Kirk Douglas, who I thought was a fantastic character. And uh, the ending is quite shocking, although there's a little bit added on to the end, which I hate. Um, it's basically just someone randomly singing while soldiers watch, and I really hated that scene. It just felt very out of place, very added on last minute. And um, the ending to what we assume is the ending of the movie is so blatantly shocking. And of course, I won't spoil what that is, but um, I would highly recommend checking out this movie. It is a black and white film, um, but the way it portrays trench warfare, the cinematography is fantastic and overall looks great in black and white. And um, I really thoroughly enjoyed the courtroom scenes of this movie. So that is Paths of Glory. Next up, we have another Kubrick movie starring Kirk Douglas, and that is Spartacus. Uh, this movie is about three and a half hours long. The first time I watched it, I did watch it in a couple of sittings, if I recall. Um, but I recently rewatched this, and I watched it all in one go because I was just overwhelmed uh, by how fantastic the cinematography was. I loved the ideas and themes uh, conserved in this movie, especially the idea of oppression, which is also contradicted by the idea of commitment. And um, overall, I thought the arena fight sequences were great. Challenging the Roman Empire is a great uh, story aspect. And overall, this film is absolutely phenomenal. I believe this particular edition has some uh, deleted scenes inserted into the final cut of the movie, which is very interesting. Um, this is the 50th anniversary edition, and I'm sure you can find this very cheap online. Uh, so that is Spartacus. Moving on now to the Visionary Filmmaker Collection box set, we shall begin with Lolita. So, Lolita is an interesting film for me. I've only seen it once, and to be honest, I do actually remember it very vividly, and I have no idea why. It's a black and white film once again, and it's supposed to be the tale of, basically, forbidden love. It's very controversial because uh, the male character portrayed by James Mason, Humbert Humber, is an older man, and Lolita is an underaged girl. And you can see where I'm going with this. The original novel was written by Vladimir Nebakov, if I'm pronouncing that right. Nebakov, sounds about right. And um, it's not really something I'm particularly interested to read, but I would love to see a comparison between the novel and the movie, uh, considering the film was actually uh, written in terms of a screenplay. It was written by the writer of the book, and um, of course brought to life uh, through Kubrick's vision. And to be honest, the film isn't terrible, it just has a very boring feel to it here and there, and obviously with the controversial theme, it's something that you really can't get out of your head, and the way they portray it is supposed to be like scandalous and interesting, but I didn't find it to be that way whatsoever, and um, found it quite creepy, but I really did quite like the character of Humbert Humbert, he has this very odd charismatic voice, or maybe that's just James Mason, um, but yeah, very bizarre film to say the least, and certainly my least favourite out of all these Kubrick movies in my personal opinion. So leaving the Visionary Filmmaker Collection box up just for a moment, we move on to one of my absolute favourites, and that is Doctor Strangelove, or How I Learned to Start Worrying and Love the Bomb. 
This film is absolutely fantastic in terms of it being a black comedy, and it satirizes the potential and the fear of a Cold War outbreak between the Soviet Union and the United States, and I love the concept of miscommunication and a crazed general sending planes over to Russia to bomb Russia. All of this, of course, results in the world ending, but I love um, how these planes have been sent over to bomb Russia, and if Russia gets bombed, a doomsday device will destroy the entirety of planet Earth. What a fantastic and hilarious concept, and uh, the way the characters are so mismatched, and all the miscommunication in particular, with Captain Mandrake, portrayed by Sellers, um, who was the assistant to the general. Of course, the general was not... 100% there, which was a comical attitude for such a high-ranking character, and of course Sellers does portray multiple roles in this movie. We have uh, Dr. Strangelove himself, who I absolutely love. I love his crazed Nazi hand. Bold curiosity for the adventure head! <laughs> And I also really thoroughly enjoyed his character of the President, who was quite a very relaxed character under the circumstances, which is very bizarre. And um, George C. Scott a fantastic character as well, and I really wish he had done more comedies. I wish Kubrick had done more comedies. Um, this was just fantastic, and certainly uh, my kind of humour. I would highly recommend this movie. Fantastic stuff. Going back to this box set now, and sticking with it... Uh, next up we have 2001 A Space Odyssey, which is certainly one of my favourite movies of all time for the soundtrack alone. And I love how Kubrick actually managed to match the cinematography with the soundtrack. Um, in particular, I absolutely love the transition shot from where the ape learns how to use the bone as a weapon, and throws the bone in the air, only for the bone floating in the air to turn into a satellite orbiting Earth. Just absolutely fantastic stuff, and I just love um, sort of the three-part stages of the movie, with the dawn of man evolving into the moon mission, and then the Jupiter mission. And um, I love hearing people's convoluted opinions and uh, theories about the ending as well. Just some really great stuff. And um, if you have any convoluted thoughts on the ending, drop them in the comments below. I would love to read them. Next up we have one of my all-time favourite movies, and that of course is A Clockwork Orange, which was the first ever Kubrick movie I ever watched. And I absolutely loved it. The soundtrack, the violence, the overall storyline, it was just incredibly intriguing and I've seen it so many times I never get bored of it. It's just absolutely fantastic. In particular, in terms of soundtrack, I do really love the marina sequence, especially for the cinematography as well and the record shop scenes, which are fantastic too. One thing that I do love about this film is the way Kubrick interpreted the ending, and how originally when I watched the film, I always found the ending to be very underwhelming. And then I read the novel by Anthony Burgess. And to be honest, the ending is kind of typical, in my opinion. It really does just sort of throw back to the beginning as though nothing has really occurred. And that I find quite frustrating, so obviously the way Kubrick fashioned the ending is certainly something I've grown to appreciate over time, and um, I absolutely love this movie. Next up we have Barry Lyndon, which is a film that I had genuinely never heard of until I bought this box set a couple of years ago. And it was a pleasant surprise, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, Ryan O'Neill's portrayal of the character of Barry Lyndon is absolutely terrific. And uh, what really did mesmerise me, and it's a point that me and my good friend, uh, the Cryptic Cinema here on YouTube, agreed upon, was that every shot, uh, particularly the outdoor shots, just looked like an oil painting, and I absolutely agree with that. Um, just such a fantastic way of summarising those kinds of shots. And apparently Kubrick also used a lot of candlelight to light his shots in this film, uh, which is very interesting. And the overall story is quite simplistic. Barry Lyndon ends up marrying a widow and then climbs the ladder of prosperity and wealth and becomes a privileged person, only for that to be taken away in a really brutal uh, standoff at the end of the film, which was by far my favourite scene, definitely one of the most compelling sequences in this film, and uh, overall, absolutely phenomenal. I really thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Next up we have my all-time favourite horror movie, and that, of course, is The Shining, uh, which is certainly one of the most iconic movies in terms of pop culture references, and likewise with A Clockwork Orange, which I did fail to mention, especially in The Simpsons. Here's Johnny! Um, but with The Shining, I absolutely loved the depth of the characters, I loved the pacing throughout the film, loads of very creepy and very disturbing imagery, 
and um, I do personally adore the final shot of the film. And what more can I say, it is certainly a perfect movie in my opinion, really great scare factors, and I would definitely recommend this movie, it's certainly one of my favourites. Next up we have Full Metal Jacket, which is a very fascinating film for me personally. I love uh, the way it interprets the Vietnam War, and I just love how the film is actually split into two halves. The first half is training the Marine recruits under a very strict drill sergeant, and of course we have the business with Private Pile, which is incredibly disturbing in my personal opinion. And the latter half I absolutely love for the action, it's just absolutely phenomenal, and I quite like the character of the Animal Mother, which was a really great standout character portrayed by Adam Baldwin, um, which was incredibly surprising, and I do love the character of Private Joker, of course. And finally we have Kubrick's last movie, and that of course is Eyes Wide Shut. Which, to be honest, I have only seen the once, and I wasn't overly impressed with it the first time I watched it, however, I did really like the character dynamic of uh, Dr. Bill Harford, portrayed by Tom Cruise, and his wife Alice, portrayed by Nicole Kidman. And uh, their relationship was very bizarre, in my opinion, and um, I actually quite liked how um, Alice opens up to her husband and just randomly declares that she has had certain fantasies about having an affair, and then that basically turns into an obsession uh, for Bill as he starts obsessing over the idea of having a sexual relation with another woman. And he becomes way in over his head when he ends up in this very bizarre cult of mask-wearing orgy members, which is insane. And overall, those sequences in particular had some fantastic costume design, but were still incredibly strange. And um, I certainly would like to give this film a rewatch to get a better feel of it. Um, so that's all seven movies. Um, there's also a bonus disc in this box set, which is a bonus documentary film called Oh Lucky Malcolm, uh, which is a documentary narrated by Tom Cruise focusing on the life and career of Malcolm McDowell, um, which is a very insightful documentary. So, thanks for watching my Stanley Kubrick Blu-ray collection overview, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, be sure to leave a like down below, let me know in the comments what your favourite Stanley Kubrick movie is, and please subscribe down below for more upcoming videos.